Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday, June 6th, and it's been a little while since my last video, which was on Sunday, and I do apologize for the lack of density of updates. It's been a bit of a packed work schedule for me, uh, but here we are, and it's a much different look than it was on Sunday. On Sunday, we had a very broad monsoonal gyre down here, and uh, the potential for tropical development to come from it, although what we thought was a small chance, but we did end up getting Tropical Storm Andrea to form, and it's now moving into the Bight of Florida and how we got development was we had the broad low out here and then we had a nice little tight center form to the east under the edge of the convection and uh, in in essence a jump of the storm center towards the thunderstorms and this was kind of expected and I incorporated it into my forecast track for the storm but I didn't really expect it to take off the way it did. The recon plane went in yesterday and found a closed center with 1002 millibar pressure and it was named Andrea right there on the spot and uh, overnight last night and today Day, we had two recon flights which uh, ultimately found a pressure down to 993 millibars as this thing was about to move into the far northeastern Gulf of Mexico. So it had a nice strengthening trend up to 60 mile per hour winds, though these will likely not be observed at the surface as this uh, storm moves ashore as it's been weakening over the cool shelf water during the last few hours before landfall and dry air and shear are really getting to its center now and uh, usually weakening storms do not have their maximum winds hit the surface uh, with quite uh, the force that they normally would if it was a strengthening or steady storm and nevertheless this is a little bit stronger than we thought it would be and a little bit more of a wind threat, though really not that heavy of a wind damage concern uh, for the folks in Florida and up the eastern seaboard. The main damage will be done by tornadoes if the wind does anything. The main threat is still the heavy rain, which could exceed 10 inches storm totals over the last few days over parts of the Florida peninsula by the time this is all said and done. And uh, here we are with the radar, uh, which may have to refresh here. Yeah, it's not going to animate, so I'll refresh that. Uh, the main issue is the precipitation uh, with the storm. You can see uh, the rain mass to the north side of the center. The center is down here moving into Dixie County and uh, beyond inland into the uh, northern Florida uh, peninsula now. And the main mass of rain is to the north. This will become bear clinically influenced by the trough to the northwest, which is steering the storm. And so this rainfall will be brought northwestward with the storm and uh, drench Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and on up the eastern seaboard. The center of the storm will likely pass just inland along the southeast coast, very close to the original track uh, that we had on Sunday for this low, and uh, will ultimately run up the eastern seaboard. Will not be a threat to redevelop over water per se, but it will likely be strengthening a little bit uh, due to non-tropical influences as it rides up the front to the north and could bring tropical storm-like conditions all the way up the eastern seaboard and even into New England with heavy rain and gusty winds over gale force. So be aware of heavy weather with this, even if it loses its name by the time it passes North Carolina, which is when it will likely cease being a tropical cyclone. You can see some rain bands extending back with thunderstorms all the way down to the into the keys here, and there may be a chance for some isolated tornadoes still to form with this, though most of the tornado threat has passed. We did have some near Tampa and some near Miami, and there may have been others that I missed. Uh, but it's almost over. In fact, we're getting a nice drying trend over parts of the Florida Peninsula as dry air, aided by the shear, is uh, being entrained into the southeastern quadrant of the storm. And uh, there are some bands that still have to clear out, but the majority of the rain is now going to be north and northeast of the center as this thing rides up the coast. Here's the water vapor loop, and you can see the broad trough in the mid-latitudes uh, coming down to get this and bringing it right up the eastern seaboard with it. Again, this will be coming right up into New England and then eventually even into southeastern Canada and then on out into the North Atlantic, and it will be bringing rain all the way up that track. You can see uh, the WPC, formerly HPC, precipitation forecast showing a swath of four plus inches all the way up through New England and then rain continuing all the way up into Canada. And again, storm totals down in Florida will likely exceed 10 inches. They will be less north of, the, uh, north of here uh, because Andrea will be accelerating in forward speed. She is already accelerating and uh, will uh, leave less time for rain to fall from her clouds onto the ground. But this will still be a problem. Several inches in a short period of time can cause flooding and uh, may be an issue uh, for some of these states along the eastern seaboard and the I-90 corridor.
Now here's uh, the big picture again, and uh, you might be thinking to yourself how active uh, of an early start this is. We have a storm in the Gulf of Mexico, but really what's more impressive even than Andrea is uh, that we have this out here in the Central Atlantic. This is Invest 92L. This was actually a tropical wave which came off of Africa and is now not a tropical wave so much as it is a tropical low. And to be quite honest with you, uh, this is an undeclared tropical depression in my mind because it's had convection firing over what is clearly a closed low-level circulation and uh, although this would not get named uh, this is likely what we would call a depression if it was just a month or two later on the calendar but the NHC does not like to classify things that are going to obviously die as soon as they reach uh, the upper trough that typically resides here near the Eastern Caribbean. This is already sheared and this is going to die during the next 24 to 48 hours. However, it is extremely impressive to see something like this out in the Central Atlantic this early in the year. If we get development in here, it's pretty expected. The Andrea is not rare or anything of the sort. Uh, she's a very typical June storm. We had a similar storm in Arlene in 2005, Alberto in 2006, uh, Debbie um, last year. And uh, this is not rare at all. Uh, what is rare is to have something like this in the Central Atlantic in early June. Generally, the waves are very weak and far south at this time of year. But if this is any indication of the season to come, um, it could indicate uh, the kind of Cape Verde season that may come out of this year. Um, to get active tropical waves early and to get a storm out here in July would really indicate uh, that uh, we're in for a big year, at least out of the deep tropics and from African easterly waves. Uh, that is something to watch very carefully. Um, however, as active as it is having Andrea form here and this out here, uh, which could be a tropical depression, imagine that having two storms at once in the first week of June. Um, as active as this looks, uh, you're probably going to come uh, three to four weeks from now and talk about how slow the season is because we're unlikely to have much activity from this point forward for another three to four weeks because the MJO, which supplies upward motion, is leaving the Atlantic. It came out into phase two and supported upward motion and helped Andrea get going. It is now leaving here, according to the European, coming out into phases three and four, which supports upward motion in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific. And if air is rising there, air usually sinks uh, on the other side of the world where we are and suppresses a tropical convection and tropical development. And it is not impossible for storms to get going during the downward phase of the MJO, but early in the year, you generally need its support or there's no chance. So we are likely to have a very quiet period in the Atlantic through at least the end of this month. Um, and there could something could pop up locally. There could be a front that drops down into the Gulf of Mexico and spins something up during that time. That is certainly not something we can rule out. And if that happens, I will be updating you on it. Um, but uh, large scale development chances are low for the rest of this month. But this does mean the way the MGO has, be, has been behaving, it will likely come back around to phases eight, one, and two, which are favorable for Atlantic development uh, during the first two weeks of July. And that will likely be the next period that we will watch in general for development and we may not have our next storm which I believe will be named Barry I could be totally wrong on that I always forget the names uh, may not occur for another month or so so we may have a while to wait uh, but that's it for today thanks for watching